so this is where we left off in the last video. We've derived the expression for xi of x. And now don't forget our ultimate goal is to find the transmission coefficient for a particle that's coming from the left to the right. And in order to find the transmission coefficient, we need to find the values of these constants. And we can do that by exploiting the continuity restrictions that is required for xi of x. So we call that xi of x, and its derivative must be continuous. So we can use these two conditions to find the values of a, b, c, d, f, and g, which would help us find the transmission coefficient. So first of all, recognize that g is equal to 0. So we know that g is equal to 0 because we're analyzing the scenario where the particle is coming in from the left to the right. So when it comes in from the left, it encounters the uh, potential barrier. And it e either it bounces back or it passes through the barrier. But in no situation would you find the particle coming in from the right. And so that's why this g term here is equal to 0. So g is equal to 0. So this is the first thing that we, can, uh, that we know. Now, second of all, we're going to use the continuity requirement for xi of x to come up with some uh, relationships between these constants. So we know that xi of x must be continuous, and so that's why xi of x is continuous when x is equal to negative a. So the second condition is xi of x is continuous, so xi of x is continuous at x is equal to negative a. So this is our second condition. And if xi of x is continuous at negative a, if we substitute in negative a for this expression, and we will, if we do that, we will get something like this. So b to the power of i k a. Then we, we would get the same value as substituting in negative a for this expression. So only if this relationship is satisfied would our xi of x be continuous. And so that's why we know that the left-hand side is equal to right-hand side. So for the right-hand side, we have c times e to the power of negative l a and then plus d times e to the power of l a so this is a a uh, restriction that we have obtained using the xi of x continuity and we can derive another one of these restrictions by analyzing continuity at x is equal to a so don't forget x also needs to be continuous, uh, xi of x also needs to be continuous at x equal to a. So xi of x continuous at x is equal to a. And so we do the same thing. We substitute in x is equal to a for this expression, which gives us c times e to the power of l a plus d times e to the power of negative l a. And this is equal to substituting in a for this expression. Now don't forget g is equal to zero, so this term is non-existent. So for the right-hand side, we only have f times e to the power of i k a. So this is a another restriction that we have found using the continuity requirements. And so now we can move on to uh, using the uh, continuity requirements for the derivative of psi of x. So first let's find the derivative of psi of x. So the derivative of psi of x, we just differentiate these three terms separately. So let's do just that. So for the region x is smaller than negative a, we just differentiate this, which is easy enough. So we have i k times a e to the power of i k x minus b e to the power of negative i k x. So this applies for x is smaller than negative a. And then for the region where x is between negative and positive a, we differentiate this term. So we get l c e to the power of l x minus d e to the power of negative l x. So this applies for the region x is between negative and positive a. And in case you're wondering, this negative term comes from the negative term here because of the chain rule. So don't forget the negative sign. And then we differentiate this as well. Don't forget g is equal to 0, so we only have to differentiate this term. And so we get i k times f e to the power of i k x. And this applies for x is larger than a. And so this is xi prime of x. Now what we can do now is to use the continuity requirements for xi prime of x to obtain two more restrictions. So we've so far we've obtained three restrictions and now let's move on to the fourth. So we know that xi prime of x is continuous at x is x is equal to negative a. So we do the same thing as before. We take this expression and then we substitute in negative a. So we get i k a times e to the power of negative i k a minus b times e to the power of i k a and this is equal to substituting in negative a for this expression so we have l c 
times e to the power of negative la minus d e to the power of la. And then I'm going to dump this ik to the other side to make this expression look a bit better. So we have this term minus b times e to the power of ika equals to negative il divided by k. So I'm dividing this by i, and I'm moving the i back up in the numerator, and so we, we have an extra negative sign. So this is just multiplying the numerator and denominator by i. So we have an extra negative sign. And then we have this expression on the right-hand side. And so this is another restriction that we have derived. And then we can actually combine this expression with one that we derived previously. So we can take this expression, and then we can add it to this expression. And then we will get something that looks relatively nice. So if we add this expression to this expression, you can see that on the left-hand side, the b terms, they cancel out. So we have minus b e to the power of ika. And here we have positive b uh, times e to the power of ika. So if we add the left-hand side, they just cancel out. And we're, we're left with 2a times e to the power of negative ika. And then we can also group up the terms on the right-hand side. So we have c times 1 minus i l divided by k. So we're just grouping up the terms with the c. So I'm just adding this term with this term. So we have c times 1 minus i l divided by k times e to the power of negative l a. And then we can do the same thing for d. So you can see that there we have two uh, negative signs. So they just become a positive sign. And then we add that expression to this expression. So we just have 1 plus i l divided by k e to the power of l a. And so this is another expression that we can use later on. And so this is actually one of the more important uh, uh, expressions that we will need later on. So uh, we've derived this expression and this expression, and now I've combined them into this one single expression. So this is the one that we'll actually be using later on. And then now moving on, we can once again use another, uh, use the continuity of xi prime of x as at x is equal to a to derive another restriction. So xi prime of x is continuous at x is equal to a. And then the expression that we'll get is just substituting in a for this expression. So on the left hand side we have l times c to the power of la minus d e to the power of negative la. And this is just equal to substituting a for this expression. So ikf e to the power of ika. And yet we have another restriction that will be useful for us later on. And now once again we can combine this with another one of the expressions we've derived earlier. I'm going to combine it with this term over here. So first of all I'll just uh, divide the L term over to the other side. So we have this ik divided by L. And then I'm going to add this expression to this expression. And once again you see that the left hand side the terms they cancel out. So if I add them together we get 2c e to the power of la this is equal to, so you can see that the d terms they cancel out. So the d terms they both cancel out. So on the left hand side we're left with this, and on the right hand side we have this f term here added to this term, so we just have f times 1 plus ik divided by l e to the power of ika. And so this is something that will be useful later on. And then I'm going to do something similar again, but this time instead of adding the, the two expressions together, I'm going to subtract this expression from this expression. So on the left hand side we have this expression and then I'm going to subtract this expression from the left hand side. So if I do a subtraction in the end what I'll be getting is you can see that the c terms they will cancel out so in the end we have negative 2d e to the power of negative la. And on the right hand side you will see that we have first of all we have this term ik divided by l times f e to the power of ika and then if I subtract this term from the right-hand side, we have minus f e to the power of ika. And so with a bit of rearranging, I'll just dump this negative sign to the other side. We get f times 1 minus ik divided by l e to the power of ika. And this is another expression that will be useful later on. So to briefly summarize what we've achieved in this video, we have uh, using the continuity requirements for xi of x and xi prime of x, we've come up with a bunch of expressions that 
the constants a, b, c, and d must follow. And then using these expressions, we will be able to derive uh, the transmission coefficient later on. So I'll derive the transmission coefficient in the next video. And for this video, just remember uh, we have derived this expression, which will be useful later on. So the one with this double arrow, remember this expression. And then uh, these two expressions will also be useful. So in the next video, I will be using this expression and these two expressions to derive the transmission coefficients. And so that's it for this video.